If you're considering starting or transitioning to a career in business intelligence or data science, then there are a few key skills that you'll need to acquire. In this video, I'll be discussing what the basic skill set is that you'll need to succeed. Hello and welcome to Vitamin BI, bringing you business intelligence for beginners and beyond. My name's Adam and on this channel I talk about how you don't need to be a data scientist or have a huge budget to get started in BI. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when I post new videos. Hey guys, it's been a while I know. If you'd like to know why it's taken me so long to get back to posting videos, check out this short video here. So as I said in my intro, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the various different skills you'll need to acquire if you want to get into BI or data science. It's a question that I get asked on a regular basis, so I thought why not put my answer into a video? This is going to be just a basic overview, so not going overboard on the details. But it should give you a general guide that will hopefully push you to find out more for yourself. Okay, so we'll start with the most obvious, the basic foundation and source of all business intelligence, data. For a geek like me, data can be quite exciting. It's nerdy, I know, but I actually often get a buzz out of getting access to a brand new data source for the first time. It's like diving into the unknown or setting off on an adventure into uncharted territory to discover things that no one has ever discovered before. Because sometimes that's essentially what I'm doing, manipulating and aggregating the data and crunching the numbers to gain insights from it to learn things that neither I nor the data's owners knew before. Anyway, I digress a little, but not without reason. I'm kind of demonstrating to you that unless you can get passionate about data, there's not much point in exploring the possibility of a career in data science. So that's the first skill you'll need. Well, really more of a character trait. When it comes to data though, there are three main areas you need to know about. What it is, where it is, and how to access and query it. What it is means what it's made up of and the different formats it comes in. Fairly straightforward basic stuff that's quick to learn. To find out more about what data is made up of, check out this video here. In terms of the different formats it comes in, well, that depends on its source. You essentially have structured and unstructured data. Structured data tends to be the kind you would probably most associate with what data looks like, the kind of traditional rows and columns tabular format you might find in an Excel spreadsheet. Unstructured data is basically everything else, and by that I mean literally anything else. Emails, videos, audio, PDFs, log files, anything. I've got to say that unstructured data is fairly uncommon when it comes to the realm of BI, so it's not something you would necessarily need to be an expert on. I'm certainly not. You would, however, need to be very familiar with structured data, which tends to be stored in Relational Database Management Systems, or RDBMS. I haven't done a video on relational databases yet, but I plan to, and when I do, I'll put a link up here or in the description below. This leads quite nicely onto the second element of data I mentioned, where it is. So, as I said, the data you will need to deal with more often than not is structured data that's stored in some kind of relational database. Things like MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server. I'll get onto what SQL is in a minute. Or it could be something as basic as a CSV, a comma separated values file, or indeed an Excel file. Going back to relational databases, they're either on-premise or in the cloud. So either installed on an in-house server or, as the popular meme jokes, on someone else's computer, i.e. the cloud. The cloud is in fact much more than that, but for the purposes of this discussion, that's essentially what we're talking about. I just mentioned some of the different SQL database types. 
Well, there are cloud versions of these as well. So instead of installing one on your in-house server, you can essentially rent what's called an instance of one in the cloud. Okay, so now we've covered the what and where of data. The third part is knowing how to access and query data. Again, we'll break this down into different types of data. When it comes to relational databases, they have what's called a host address. Basically, it's IP address where it can be contacted. And then you need to use a username and password that's been set up in the database in order to connect to it and query its data. To query just means to ask questions of. And this is done using the query language called SQL, also commonly called SQL. It stands for Structured Query Language. And it has different versions, like I mentioned before, MySQL, Postgre, etc., whose syntax varies slightly, but it's mainly the same when it comes to querying. When it comes to cloud data sources, other than those cloud versions of RDBMS, the way these are communicated with is usually via what's called an API, Application Programming Interface. The most common types of these are REST and SOAP. They have what are called endpoints that let you access specific data sets. And the way querying works is that you make calls to the API that contain parameters asking it to return the data you want. So I guess a good question you might want to ask here is, do I need to learn all about how APIs work? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, you do need to have a good understanding of how they work because you may be called upon to write custom API calls to query data. And if you haven't got a clue about them, then you'll be a bit lost. But you don't need to be an expert, know how to build them, that kind of thing. When you're working with these online services and their data sources, you'll more than likely be doing so with a BI tool. And normally the tool you're working with will have a data connector for that specific source, which means you don't need to formulate the individual API calls yourself. If it doesn't have a connector, then you've chosen the wrong tool, which is a whole different story. So again, although it's a good idea to have basic API knowledge in your tool belt, it's not essential. Talking of BI tools, now is a good time to bring you a message from our sponsor. The sponsor of today's video is actually myself. The channel isn't big enough to have a real sponsor, but I've got something to plug, so there. For the past couple of months now, I've been working on a brand new online course called the Ultimate Guide to Google Data Studio. And all being well, it will go live on Wednesday the 7th of October 2020, so in under two weeks time. Data Studio is Google's free to use BI tool and is the absolute perfect tool for beginners to get started in business intelligence and data science. The course contains over 70 videos, five hours worth, and teaches you everything you need to know to become highly proficient at Data Studio, and also about BI as a whole, how to work with data and create data sources, how to build queries, manipulate query results, write formulas to create calculated fields, and how to build and share stunning interactive dashboards. If you're looking for a way to get started in BI and data science, then this is the course for you. And if you pre-order before the October 7th launch, then you can get the course at a 50% discount. That's right, 5050 50% but only up until the course goes live. So get it now before time runs out. For more information and to enroll in the course, click on the link in the description or go to vitaminbi.education. Hope to see you in there. Okay, back to the video. So where were we? Oh yes, basic knowledge of APIs is a good idea, but not essential. What is mandatory in my eyes, however, is knowing SQL for querying. You may be asking, but won't the BI tool be able to do that for me as well? The answer to that is almost definitely yes. However, the problem is that you may need to do some work on the data before you connect it to your BI tool. Let's say that the data you need to visualize is contained across several different tables in a database. These tables contain all historical data, let's say millions of rows in each but you only want to query data for a specific period of time, and you don't need all of the dozens of fields or columns in every table. 
To just connect to all that data with your BI tool and then query that is really inefficient. It means that your BI tool is going to need to aggregate millions of rows across different tables for every query, which makes your dashboards really slow to load. And what if your BI tool doesn't have a graphical interface that you can use to join the different tables together? You'll need to know the SQL code to do that as well. All this being said, BI tools are becoming more and more advanced in their capabilities and functionalities, so there's a good chance you'll be able to do most of what I've talked about without knowing SQL. But what if you can't? Another benefit of knowing how to query data using SQL is that it helps you to understand how querying works in general, how queries are formulated to join and aggregate data. So, moving on. After you understand and are comfortable with data, you'll need to know how to use BI tools, or more specifically, how to use one BI tool inside and out. And I mean how to do everything with it, become a full-on expert. Because once you have experience of pushing one BI tool to its limits, then you'll probably be able to use any other BI tool to a fairly proficient degree within a very short space of time. This is because most of them function in a very similar way. And the reason for this is that there aren't 100 different ways to query the same data. The results behind the data visualizations you'll need to produce for your dashboards is identical. So it stands to reason that the way to get to that result using different tools should be very similar. Here's a question. Have you ever used a pivot table? If you don't know what that is, then watch this video here. If you have, then you pretty much know how to use a BI tool to query and visualize data. Because most BI tools, at least the ones I've seen, basically have a pivot table engine at their core to query data. The way the tool's interface presents the functionalities of the pivot table model will differ. The way things are named, how the elements of the query are placed into the pivot table, etc. But it's still a pivot table at its core. Of course, there's more to a BI tool than visualizing data by placing fields into a pivot table. You'll also need to know how to apply manipulations to the results of queries, and also create custom fields by writing formulas. Lots of BI tools have their own proprietary language for writing them that you'll need to learn. Others will actually incorporate elements of SQL or something very similar, like Google's Data Studio. So another good reason to learn SQL. Writing custom formulas is all part of the day-to-day -day of working in BI, because a lot of the time we're problem solving. Which is why I talked about pushing one BI tool to its limits. Because once you have, you'll become familiar with the kinds of problems you'll need to solve. And although the data is always different, the same kinds of problems always have a tendency to reappear. So by learning how to solve these problems with one tool, you'll be better equipped and know how to approach them when using a different one. The next skill to have is to know how to effectively visualize data and build reports and dashboards. There is far more that goes into a dashboard than just trying to make it look as pretty or as cool as possible. Data visualization theory is something that's important to have a solid grasp of, and there are some really great books on the subject. If you'd like to learn more, then I'd suggest a great place to start would be the Visual Display of Quantitative Information by Edward Tuft. In terms of dashboard design, there are certain rules that you should follow, like telling a story and not overloading your dashboard with information. I'm not going to go into much more detail than that, because I'll be making a video dedicated to this subject coming soon. So if that's something you're interested in, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss it. So we've covered the important general areas of data, BI tools, and data visualization, albeit briefly. I'd say that that just about covers the main areas. There are, of course, other more specific skills you might need to acquire if you'd like to get into BI or data science, but this at least gives you an overview, the lay of the land, if you like. I mentioned right at the beginning about how I got excited about getting my hands on new data. It's worth repeating that if this doesn't resonate with you, then you should probably look at a different career choice. Other personal interests that would serve you well are a penchant for problem solving, logic and design. I'm interested to hear your thoughts as well. 
Is there anything really important you think I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button. And again, please do subscribe. Thanks for listening, and until the next time, stay BI Curious.